Greetings. Greetings and welcome to this educational session on the importance of eye examination in children. My name is Arif Khan. I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist here at the Eye Institute of Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, and I'm pleased to be joined by my, by my colleagues from the Eye Institute, Zabila Khan, orthoptist, and Yasmin Al Ruby, optometrist. Before we start a discussion, I'd just like to give a few introductory comments. As a pediatric ophthalmologist, I am continually frustrated by the number of older children and young adults that I see who have poor vision or even blindness in one eye. It's frustrating because had these individuals been seen as young children, it could have been completely treatable or preventable, whereas when they are older children or young adults, it's not anymore. What I'm referring to here is the issue of lazy eye or amblyopia, an issue that's unique to children. The visual system is not developed at birth. The ro there are robust connections that develop between the eye and the brain during the first four years of life, and these depend upon proper visual experience. That is to say, the eyes being aligned, clear vision, uh, no obstruction. If one eye, particularly if one eye is better than the other for any reason, the eye that has a disadvantage has less of a connection to the brain, known as lazy eye, known as amblyopia, and this is only really amenable to treatment in early childhood. The older that a child gets and in, into adulthood, it becomes less and less treatable, uh, more or less not treatable in adulthood. This slide is just reinforcing what I just said. Um, the eyes connected to the brain, the visual connections really are developing in the first four years of life and depend upon visual experience. Unfortunately, amblyopia is more frequent than it should be. It's up to 4% of the population, which indicates that we're missing it. We're not catching it as we should be. And again, the tragedy is that it is reversible often if caught early. But as a child gets older and into adulthood, it becomes less and less and then not treatable anymore. The effects of amblyopia or lazy eye go beyond the loss of vision. Uh, children with amblyopia have decreased eye-hand coordination. They have decreased reading speed. They actually have an increased risk of blindness. Career opportunities are limited. And these patients, these children, actually have an increased risk for anxiety and depression. It's because of this issue of amblyopia that we recommend all children at approximately four years of age have a good screening eye exam by an eye care professional. This is if the child is asymptomatic. If the child is symptomatic, for any reason, if the, any evidence for discolored eyes, eye crossing, or suggestion of decreased vision, the child should be examined at that age immediately. In other words, we're not supposed to wait until they're four years old. We even see newborns um, any age if there's any signs or symptoms of an eye problem. But the important thing to stress is that even if the child seems normal and there are no issues uh, that are apparent in the visual system, Still, that child should have a good screening exam around four years old to detect the possibility of amblyopia because, again, it's most amenable to treatment in early childhood. I'd like to now just give a few examples of sign or signs and symptoms that should prompt an eye exam immediately, regardless of age. Here's a child whose eye seems to be turning in. If there's any sort of perceived eye deviation, whether one eye is in, seems to be in, seems to be out, seems to be up, that should be Im evaluated immediately by a pediatric ophthalmologist. We're not supposed to wait until they're four years old. That waiting until four years old is only for a, someone who seems to have no problems. This needs immediate attention and evaluation. Here's a child whose right eye seems bigger, and there's also an abnormal color in the eye. Signs like this, again, regardless of age, need to be evaluated immediately at that age by a pediatric ophthalmologist. Abnormal reflex in the eye also needs to be evaluated immediately. 
it could be something innocuous like an, uh, a strange reflex from a camera because of the angle but it could also be something more serious and we don't know uh, unless the child is examined again any kind of sign or symptom that seems abnormal in a child should be evaluated at that age. Problems around the eye should be evaluated as well uh, because things like lid droop, as shown in this photograph, are sometimes associated with a amblyopia that can be treated. More rarely, signs like this can be associated with more significant systemic disease. Bottom line, any abnormal eye finding needs evaluation immediately at that time. Don't wait until the child is older. Now this child had difficulty seeing the board in school, was examined and found to be nearsighted, that is to say have myopia, and was given glasses, and with the glasses he can see clearly. Myopia typically is not associated with lazy eye. It's typically not associated with the amblyopia. But it is another major issue that we've seen increasingly in children. And it's a problem not because of amblyopia typically, but more because of the ocular disease and ocular complications that are associated with nearsightedness in the adult years. Unfortunately, we are seeing a dramatic rise in the number of children with myopia. It is estimated that more than half of the world will have myopia by 2050 with current trends. This is a huge problem because of the comorbidities that are associated with high myopia. We'll discuss this a little bit more in just a few minutes. I'd just like to summarize now my opening comments. All children, who even if they seem to have normal vision, should have an eye exam slash screening at around four years old. This is because amblyopia is too common, up to 4% of the population, and is potentially, potentially reversible in childhood, but not so much later on. This is not to say that a child needs to wait until he or she is four years old before an eye exam. Any signs or symptoms of visual difficulty should be evaluated at that time, regardless of age. And in addition to the issue of amblyopia, we now in 2021 have another issue that we have to deal with in children, progressive childhood myopia, something that also needs to be detected early so we can do things to halt its progression. Thanks very much for listening. Now let's move on to the discussion with my colleagues. Greetings. Welcome to this educational session on the importance of the eye examination in children. Once again, I'm Arif Khan. I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. And I'm joined with my colleagues from the Eye Institute. Over to the right is my right, Zabila Khan, orthoptist. And to my left, Yasmina Ruby, optometrist. So Zabila, I'd like to start with you. Uh, thanks for joining us. We have a lot of O's in ophthalmology. I mentioned I'm an ophthalmologist. That's a, once again a physician who is specializes in medical and surgical care of eye disease. You're an orthoptist. Can you tell us a bit about your role in the Eye Institute? What is the role of an orthoptist? Sure. So um, orthoptists are specialists who specialize in visual exam of very young children. Um, so we see patients that have... Um, lazy eye, so if the eye is crossing, we also see them, and also um, any abnormalities with the movement of the eyes, so any eye muscle uh, issues. And often this uh, can present as double vision as well, so we see children and adults with all of these conditions. So I mentioned in my opening remarks that every child should have a uh, complete eye exam or screening eye exam by around four years old. and even before that, if anything is noticed, they sh the child should be brought in immediately. There shouldn't be any delay. I find that sometimes parents are hesitant to bring their children in. They wait. They don't bring their child in, even if they think there's something wrong, because they feel the child can't be examined. The child won't be cooperative. So, so what do you say to these parents? 
Um, so regardless of the age of the child, um, there are, in our examination, we're able to establish whether they have visual problems. So even if the child is not verbal, um, uh, we are able to determine if there's a problem with the eye. So how can you determine that if the child is not speaking? Um, what kind of things do you do to, to assess the vision? Sure. The so, um, you know, often what we will look for is uh, behaviors from the child that would determine that they're seeing. So, for example, a child may uh, smile if you smile back at you if you smile at them. So they smile to a silent smile. Uh, they will follow, uh, fix and follow a light. Um, and also we have some tests that we can do that are purely objective, so we don't require a subjective response from them to determine whether they're seeing or not. So one of the things I thought to specialize in uh, is the diagnosis and management of amblyopia. Yes. And uh, I man mentioned in my opening remarks that amblyopia is, is very common. It's up to 4% of the population. So that means it's being missed because it's treatable in childhood. So why is it being missed so often? Why is amblyopia so common? So amblyopia is usually a unilateral condition. So what I mean by that is it's present in one eye. Um, and for that reason, it goes unmissed. It goes missed. So um, children usually will compensate with their good seeing eye and they will never complain of having any issues. So very often it's missed. So what are some reasons, what are common reasons for amblyopia in children? Amblyopia, that is lazy eye. Sure, sure. So um, one of the, the most common uh, reasons is having uh, the need for glasses, and especially when there's a difference in the power of the eye. So if one eye has a significantly higher power than the other eye, um, they usually will have a lazy eye in the eye that has a higher prescription. Um, so one second. So we're talking about very young children here. How can we determine that a young child needs classes? Good question. So um, when a child comes in uh, for an eye exam, usually what we do is we uh, put some eye drops into the eyes and uh, dilate the pupils. So um, and we're able to determine whether the child has a prescription for glasses or not based on findings. From so them. objectively, without the child exactly. having to say anything. Exactly. Okay, I, sorry I interrupted you. So we were talking about the major causes for lazy eye or amblyopia. Sure. One of them is the need for glasses. What is another major reason you see for uh, lazy eye? One of the other most common ones is eye crossing. So if the eye is turning, the eye that is turning it usually has a, a reduced vision. Um, and also uh, one of the more uncommon ones is if you have anything that's blocking uh, the vision in that eye. So for example, some children may have a cataract in the eye or they may have a, a droopy eyelid um, and that can also cause amblyopia. This brings up another interesting point. You know, we mentioned that if the child has signs of an eye problem, the child should be evaluated immediately because of the possibility of amblyopia. But do you ever pick up things on the eye exam that signify something beyond an eye problem? Yes. Um, so the eyes and the, the brain are very, very closely linked. Actually, the optic nerve leads directly to the brain. So um, if there are any uh, problems in the brain, um, often they can present uh, symptoms in the eyes. So again, just to reiterate, if there is anything that you notice that's abnormal with your child's eyes, please come in for an eye exam. So these are the major causes for amblyopia. Um, how do we, how do you treat amblyopia? How do you manage amblyopia? How do yeah. we make it better? Sure, so um, our first line of treatment is obviously to give the child glasses if they need them. Once you prescribe the glasses and the vision is still reducing that eye, we will um, give them uh, amblyopia therapy, which is patching. So we patch the good eye to try and um, uh, improve the vision in the forest anyway. I have two questions for you. You raised two questions from your response about the treatment. So these are very young children. They're two years old, three year old, sometimes even younger. How are you going to get them to wear glasses? How are you going to get them to wear a patch? Sure. Um, so actually, it is a big challenge often if uh, when a child is given glasses for the first time because you know they need to relax into them and the muscles in the eyes that control focusing you know, 
we have to relax those muscles. So if um, uh, a child is having difficulties wearing the glasses, there is an eye drop that we can prescribe that will help them relax into the glasses. But before that, what we say is we encourage lots of reinforcement rewards and, and uh, usually that is enough, that there is a drop that we can use to, uh, to help them relax into the glasses if um, they don't. That drop can also be used as a substitute for patching as well. Yeah, so there is, there is a drop that we can also give uh, that will um, help with, with that. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, and, and thank you for everything you do in the Eye Institute. Thank you. Without our orthoptists, we could not offer the high standard of care that we do to children. Do you have any final remarks like for the audience? Sure, sure. I, I just really wanted to go through some of the, th the things that parents may notice uh, 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 in the house that they should look for, really, and that could be indicative of a, a problem with their child's eyes. So, for example, you may notice a child holding things very close to their face or standing very close to the TV. Um, if the eye is crossing, that's another reason to come in for an eye exam. Um, if if you notice uh, your child has an abnormal head position, so what I mean by that, they may tilt their head, they may turn their face, they may put their head down. These can all be indicators that there is something wrong with the eyes or the muscles around the eyes. Um, sometimes children will bump into things um, and these, again, are all signs that may indicate that there's a problem with the eyes. Very important information. Thank you yeah. so much. Yes, me. How are you? Good morning. Good. Thank you. Is it the Thank morning? Yes. <laughs> so far. <laughs> so you heard what we've been saying. Yes. It's uh, all very important stuff. I mentioned I'm an ophthalmologist, a physician who specializes in medical and surgical care of eye disease. Mm -hmm. Zabila is an orthoptist. She uh, specializes in the assessment of children and of visions of, of problems of binocular binocular problems, binocular disorders, disorders of alignment of the eyes. Mm -hmm. You are another O, an optometrist. Yes. Can you tell us what is an optometrist? So as optometrists, we're uh, primary eye care practitioners, and uh, mainly what we do is we diagnose, treat, and manage the common vision disorders, and with a particular focus on the refractive disorders of the eyes. And these include myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism, which I'm sure you've all heard about. Sure. And we, we, you know, we're very passionate too about prevention and early detection. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about myopia. I mentioned in my uh, opening remarks that myopia is really on the rise in children. But what is myopia exactly? So yeah, when we talk about the common refractive disorders of the eyes, we have the three main ones, which are myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism. Um, hyperopia is when the eye is a little bit too short, so the light is focused behind the eye, causing a blurred image, and that's also called farsightedness. And astigmatism is when the light is focused on multiple points on the retina, also causing a distorted image. And most importantly for the discussion that we're going to have today is myopia, when the eye is a little bit elongated, uh, causing the light to focus in front of the retina, and this also causes a blurred image. And as you rightfully pointed out, myopia is on the rise, and the WHO it has published many studies saying that it's you know staggering and that we have to be careful because the projections are showing that by 2050, more than half of the world's population will be nearsighted will have myopia, and more than 10% of the population will have high myopia, which um, is very concerning because that's when we can develop all sorts of ocular complications, many of them causing irreversible vision loss. So this, this is a big problem, but I, I hear parents sometimes say to me, okay, my child has myopia, what's the big deal? They'll just get older and they'll have that laser surgery and get rid of the myopia. Yeah, there are a lot of misconceptions surrounding myopia. A lot of people think that, you know, it's just wearing a pair of glasses and eventually they can just get rid of them by having LASIK. The problem with that is that we have criteria when we talk about doing LASIK surgery. And if the myopia is too high, then these this precludes them from being good candidates for LASIK. 
but also they're not thinking about the ocular complications that come about with myopia. And with my high myopia, we could have retinal detachment, we could have higher risks of cataracts, glaucoma, and even vision threatening ones such as myopic macular degeneration. And these cannot be corrected with laser. So in other words, the, the laser surgery is taking away the blurry vision, but not changing the abnormal length of the eye. The abnormal length is still there. Exactly. So. What, what we find with myopia is that as the myopia increases, the eye actually also elongates. And when the eye is elongated, then all the parts of the eye are also stretched. And this is when you can have um, irreversible uh, ocular complications. Another thing I hear from parents sometimes is that they don't want to give their children the myopic glasses because they'll get used to them or they want to partially correct them because uh, it'll be better for them. Uh, what's your take on, on these ideas? Yeah, the, that's another misconception about myopia is, oh, you know, please don't give them the full correction because this is going to make their eyes worse. But actually, all the studies are showing that undercorrected myopia can actually make it accelerate even faster and increase the progression of myopia. So um, okay. that's why it's so important for them to come in and have their eyes tested so that we can educate them about. The so, so, yeah, this myopia in children, it really is on the rise. And 50 Very years sick, ago, yes. 50 years ago, we didn't have the numbers that we have now, pediatric myopia. Why is this happening now? Do you have any sense? So we live in a digital age. And although there are advantages to um, all this technology, there are also some big disadvantages. Children are spending way more time on their screens, especially with COVID and the onset of online schooling. We've seen a huge spike in myopia cases and progression. And this is only set to increase as things are becoming more and more digitalized. Um, so children are no longer playing outside. They're spending countless hours on their screens, holding smaller screens closer to their eyes, not looking at things far away, um, and not getting enough uh, outdoor lighting, which, which is so important to prevent the progression of myopia. So this leads perfectly into the, the next point, the next logical point. What can we do to limit this myopia in children? So it's so important to educate the parents and the children alike about the importance of outdoor play and decreasing screen time. Um, when we play outside, when we're outside, we're looking at a flat dioptric surface, we're looking far away. Um, that's, that's really uh, important to stop the elongation of the eyes, but also uh, the lux, the high lux that we get when we're outdoors, the natural lighting prevents the elongation of the eyes. Um, other tricks that we can teach our, our parents um, to, and, and the children is the 20-20-20 rule. So we tell our children, when you're at home and you're staring at your screen and you know you're going to be on it for a few hours, every 20 minutes, try to look at something far away, about 20 feet, for about 20 seconds. At least that breaks the constant staring of um, things up close. And also just, you know, reducing screen time as much as possible. Um, these are important behavioral changes and actually they've been implemented in many schools in Southeast Asia because they have such such high numbers there. Short of those behavioral measures, which are very important to take, if myopia is still progressing in childhood, are there any other measures that we have? Yeah, so there are a few risk factors for myopia. One of them is, of course, the, the behavior that we're seeing with people spending a lot more time on screens, but also there's a genetic factor. So in some cases, even if we alter or tweak the behavioral um, and uh, changes, we still find that the progression of myopia is there. So then we can resort to pharmaceutical or optical options to slow down the progression of myopia, and they've been found to be very effective. Uh, so we have pharmaceutical options such as atropine, which as Abila mentioned earlier, um, it's a drop that we use once a day before we go to bed. It's a very low concentration, and it's been proven to slow down the progression of myopia. We also have optical options such as special contact lenses or special glasses that we can uh, prescribe to our patients that also have been shown to slow down the progression of myopia, and, and it's been very effective. This is extremely important because, as you said, um, you know, the ocular complications associated with myopia in later adulthood are really uh, devastating. 
Yes. So I, I really want to take this uh, opportunity to thank you because you've been very instrumental in helping us set up a myopia clinic here at the Eye Institute. I, I don't think that any eye department is complete anymore without a myopia clinic. Definitely, absolutely. And absolutely. do you have any other final comments for the for the audience? No, I just wanted to stress the importance of early prevention and detection and getting your eyes tested early, getting our children's eyes tested early because um, being able to nip it in the bud and prevent it is a lot easier than trying to manage it and cure it later on once it's uh, set in. Thank you so much, Yasmin. Thanks again, Zabila.